Hello, welcome to Saki Aerodrome in the Crimean Peninsula. This afternoon we are ferrying this flanker up to Kershbagorovo, and along the way we'll take the Crimean tour. The original tour was created by Mark Shevsky Shepard back in, well, uh, quite a few years ago. And then about two years ago, Steve Brit Radar Dude Togginson revised, expanded, and republished it. And today we're going to fly it. In the process, I hope to enhance the wonderful work they've done a bit more. And there is an amazing amount of detail in this sim that uh, most people never get to see, and this tour is designed to show some of that to you. So strap yourself in, sit back and relax for a few more moments uh, while I get us ready to roll. All systems looking good, controls are free. Uh, tower Enfield 1-1, permission to taxi. Enfield 1-1, tower, you are cleared to taxi to runway 04, yes. Okay, here we go. Now, as I was saying, there's an incredible amount of detail packed into this sim. Some of it is cultural, some of it is historical, and some of it, as you'll find, is just plain fun for reasons that'll become very obvious. Canopy coming down. Before we're airborne, let's take a quick look at the mission map. Here we are on the ground at Saki, and then it's on to Gvardeskoya, Simferopol, then we transit the Crimean Mountains out to the Black Sea coastline, and back out to Sebastopol, taking in the sights along the way on this first leg. Okay, let's check for traffic in the pattern. Everything looks clear. Tower, Enfield 1-1, permission to take off. Enfield 1-1, Tower, you are cleared for takeoff. Tower, Enfield 1-1, one, one, rolling. Enfield 1-1, one, one, Tower, good luck. And away we go. Gear coming up. We're going to spend this entire flight at low altitude. And so, in the interest of uh, truth in advertising, there's something that I need to mention. Neither the land nor tree graphics are the default out-of-the-box version that came with the sim. I've installed some graphics mods. And the original graphics were very good. These mods make low-level flights simply outstanding. So, if you've been spending all of your time at 20,000 feet, you might want to come down and take a look. I've listed these mods and several others that I have installed in the uh, credits at the uh, end of this video. Right now we're heading towards Waypoint 1, and uh, once there we'll make the turn towards Gladadeskoya Aerodrome, and the first stop on our tour, the uh, MiG-19 Gate Guardian. And here's our turn. Now, in case you're wondering, a gate guardian is uh, usually a withdrawn piece of military equipment, such as an aircraft or an armored vehicle, and it's mounted on a plinth and uh, used as a static display near uh, to or guarding uh, the main entrance to a military base. And we're about to check out the MiG-19 guarding Gvardeskoya. Crossing the fence. And there it is coming up on our left. Okay, we'll circle around, give you another look. And here it is from the ground. It's at the real base and it's uh, represented here in the sim as well. And there is one difference though. While the sim puts it here, in the real world, it's about here, located near one of the other gates. 
And there's the city of Gardaiskia, from which the uh, base takes its name out in the distance. Okay, up next, the city of Simferopol. It's situated on the small Salhara River and is a major manufacturing, commercial, and transportation center. Okay, we'll pick up one of the rail lines uh, leading into the city, and uh, there's the uh, 645 train to Gvardeskoya. And there's uh, Simferopol coming out up ahead of us. Definitely a lot of heavy industry in this city. We'll be passing through here a second time later in the tour, but for now our interest is the rail station. There it is out ahead of us, the building complex with the clock tower. I'll swing us around so we can take another look. And this is definitely a major population center with a lot going on. Okay, here it is in the sim, and here it is in real life. Not bad. One last look. In Russian, Symphoropol. From the Greek, Symphoropolis, meaning the city of usefulness. Now we'll head out of town, head for Waypoint 4, and our transit of the Crimean Mountains. This body of water, by the way, although it's not actually part of the tour, is the Simferopol Reservoir. It provides the uh, drinking water for the area. Rosovia coming up on our right, and the uh, Salhira River flowing into the reservoir. That's the E-105 auto route. It runs through this valley on its way from Sevastopol up through uh, mainland Ukraine. Still following the E-105. In fact, we'll be more or less following it all the way through to Alushta on the coast. It cuts through the same mountain pass that our waypoints take us through on the way to the uh, Black Sea. Waypoint 4 coming up, and we've been slowly climbing up into the mountains, making the turn for the coast. If I'm not mistaken, that's Angira down in the valley. I love the modded trees. With them and the new ground textures, this is a sim made for moving mud. Here's the E-105 again, heading down towards the coast. And now, so are we. There's the resort town of Alushta in the uh, Black Sea beyond it. Waypoint 5, making the turn south past uh, Castell Mountain here. Uh, we're turning around. The M105 once again below us and heading towards Yalta. You'll find numerous resort towns along this section of the coastline. And in real life, some pretty stunning scenery. This entire region is very hilly and rocky. Ajudag Mountain out ahead, and Ruzenskoye passing off our left wing. Just beyond the mountain is Waypoint 6, and although they're not listed on the tour, these are the Adalari Rocks. They're just off the shore of Guruzov, another coastal resort town. Not too spectacular in the sim. And a little bit more interesting anyway in real life.
Now this section of coastline from Gruzov there passing behind us and extending out ahead of us another 45 kilometers or so down the coastline to Horos is referred to as Great Yalta. It includes all the cities and towns in between and of course Yalta itself coming up on our left. Yalta, as are so many other towns and cities in this part of the world, is located on the site of an ancient Greek colony. Supposedly, Greek sailors were looking for a safe shore, Yalos in Greek, on which to land. Its shallow bay proved to be ideal. Notice the lighthouse at the end of the jetty? Here it is in real life. Just another one of those little details. Now we're climbing to waypoint 7 and what's listed as the observatory complex. This is actually part of the Crimean Astrophysical Observatory, one of the largest scientific centers in Ukraine. Although this site in the sim is modeled as an optical observatory with telescopes, that's only a small part of what they do. Their observations cover the entire spectrum from gamma rays through meter radio waves. Here it is in the sim, and here it is in real life. Okay, coming over the top and on to Sevastopol. And before we get there, a little background. Some context for what you're about to see. Sevastopol is a major port city, formerly the home of the Soviet Black Sea Fleet until the breakup of the uh, Soviet Union. Now it's a Ukrainian naval base used mutually by both the Ukrainian and Russian navies. And together with Kronstadt and Gibraltar, it is one of the most famous naval citadels in Europe. Wow, that's pretty close. Sorry about that, I just had to toss that in. About a week after I flew this mission, I ran across that photograph and instantly recognized where I was. Okay, now, where were we? Because of its unique geographic location, it is of strategic naval importance. One of the most notable events involving this city is the Siege of Sevastopol from uh, 1854 to 1855, during the Crimean War. And then there is the Battle of Sevastopol during the Second World War. Many of the city's monuments and museums commemorate these two events. Okay, I'm going to swing wide for waypoint 8, which marks our entrance into Sevastopol. This is one of those waypoints that's just plain fun. There's a large railway bridge crossing the steep-sided Valley of Inkerman. There it is, just below and slightly to the left of those smokestacks. This valley is formed by the Black River where it flows into Sevastopol Bay. And several bridges span it. And of course, why would you fl ever fly over a bridge when you can fly under it? Too busy talking and uh, swung too far out. Now I have to come back to it. Here we go. Almost there. Okay, some power lines in our way. Ah, uh, hell, let's just go under them. Yeah, flying under this bridge is fun, but it's not particularly challenging. For a real challenge, you want to fly under the bridge you see here in the foreground. All right, welcome to Sevastopol. Just climbing to get a little bit of our altitude back. Our first three highlights in this city are the Malakoff Hill Battery, the Malakoff Hill Steps, and the World War II Yak-3 Memorial. All three are located on a height of land that commands the harbor and the uh, immediate area, and figured prominently in the Siege of Sevastopol. And there's the hill coming up, and you can just make out the battery above that tall building. Without getting into the history of it, in 1854, the uh, Allied troops, the United Kingdom, French, and others, landed in the Crimea with the intention of taking Sevastopol away from the Russian Tsar. The attempt turned into a siege which lasted close to a year, and the Allied troops would not be successful until, th until they had taken the Malakoff. Again, without getting into too much history, the uh, defense of Sevastopol was led by two vice admirals, Kornilov and Nakamov. I mention that because the bastion you see here is often referred to as Kornilov's Bastion. And here's the Yak Memorial commemorating the city's defense a century later during the Second World War. And the Malakoff Hill Steps, the entrance to this huge park area and open air memorial. I'll swing around so we can take another look at these. Here's the bastion once again. During the Crimean War, nine batteries and 76 guns under the command of Rear Admiral Istomin extended in a defensive line from either side of this uh, 
bastion. The defensive works moved down off the hill and out into the city. Another quick look at the Yak Memorial, commemorating the Russian defense against the Germans in World War II, and the steps that form the entrance to this memorial park. Here they are in real life, and a walkway through the park, the Yak Three Memorial, and two views of the Malakov Bastion, which is now a museum commemorating the siege. Okay, those were waypoints 9, 10, and 11 on this tour. Next up, waypoint 12 in the Crimean War Museum. There it is out in the distance in the other park area. Just from the number of museums and memorials alone, you can tell that the siege was a very traumatic event. And this museum has its own unique way of commemorating it. After the Russian army withdrew, naval personnel supported by the local militia then defended the city through a years-long siege. Inside the museum are a series of large panoramic paintings by Franz Alexeyevich Robod. They depict the siege as experienced from the top of Malakoff Hill. Next up, the Sailors Club. Unfortunately, I know little about this landmark other than it exists in this location. And this is a pretty good likeness. Now, the next nine landmarks are all packed into this point down here. There is St. Vladimir's Cathedral with its rounded top and cross and amongst the trees there. And your ornate entryway to Grafskaya Wharf or Quay, which uh, extends all the way down to the point. And next up is Waypoint 18, the Naval Building. It's that brownish square roof right at the end of the point. We're just coming around the corner, getting a better look at it. And out in the water is the monument to the scuttled ships, with the Naval Building to the left. During the siege, the Russian Navy scuttled its ships to block the entrance to the harbor. And this monument commemorates that event. Next up, the Palace of Youth, and continuing down along the waterfront, the Lunacharsky Theater, one of the oldest Russian theaters. The Hero City Obelisk, honoring the defense of the city against the Germans during the Second World War. Okay, I'll swing around so we can take another look at things, and I can point out two more items of interest. A better view of St. Vladimir's Cathedral, and coming up, one of the most beautiful squares in the city, the Admiral Nakamov Square, with its statue of the Admiral who, along with Kronolov, led the defense of the city during the Crimean War. Both died in the conflict. That red-roofed building is naval headquarters. Again, the Graskaya Wharf colonnade, Nakamov statue in the square, the red roof of naval headquarters, and one last look up this waterfront towards the harbor mouth. And crossing to the north shore, there's Konstantinov's battery. This is one of several harbor defenses that protected Sevastopol during the Crimean War. And it's still in use as a military building today. And here's a nice view of the North Shore jetty with the lighthouse and the battery. In the sim. In real life. Okay, on to waypoint 24 and the Unknown's Monument. I've also seen it referred to as the Glory Monument. But unfortunately, other than the name, that's about all I know. I don't know if it references the uh, Crimean War or World War II, or possibly neither. It's a bit of an odd-looking monument to my eye, spiking up the way it does, but here it is in the sim, and here it is in real life. We'll stay here over Sevastopol's North Shore for one more waypoint, and that'll be the Memorial Church of St. Nicholas, out there in those trees. Built at the end of the 1800s, it's the site of the Bratskoye Cemetery, one of the burial sites for Russian troops killed during the Crimean War. The church itself is pyramid-shaped. You can see it sticking up through the trees. Here it is in the sim, and in real life. Okay, now it's back across the harbor. We'll cross Sevastopol one more time and take one last look. Here's the main harbor looking up towards the uh, jetties protecting the entrance. There's the waterfront with its monuments and buildings. Malakoff Hill with the Yak-3 monument. The battery, the steps, all forming a commemorative park. Okay, now we're on our way out of the city. 
We'll make the turn at waypoint uh, 26 and head for the Sapun Gore World War II Museum. The museum's diorama depicts and commemorates the defense of Sevastopol during the Second World War against the Germans. Estimates vary, but um, roughly 90,000 Soviets were captured and 11,000 died during the uh, siege and its aftermath. There's the monument itself and the building housing the diorama beyond it. Now we're coming up on waypoints 28 and 29 representing the charge of the Light Brigade. Once again, we're back in the Crimean War. This fateful cavalry charge made by a British Light Brigade happened right through here. Most of us know about this charge through the poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson, named appropriately enough the Charge of the Light Brigade. Okay, now, turning towards our next waypoint in Balaclava. During the Crimean War, this port was the site of a key British supply base. The British were encamped nearby, and the Light Brigade attack was a part of the British defense. Here's Balaclava itself. And now we'll turn and head back up the coast towards Alupka, and let's take another look at the map. Here's that dense packing of waypoints we just completed. Balaclava, then waypoints 31 and 32, bringing us to Voronsov's Palace and the Swallow's Nest Restaurant. Then it's back inland to waypoint 35, followed by the Khan's Palace at waypoint 36. Then back to Simferopol for the Tevriya Locomotive Stadium, and then back out to the coast to take in Sudak Castle at waypoint 39, and the infamous rock with a hole in it at waypoint 40. Okay, I'm just going to skip up the coastline here to waypoint 32. Pretty rugged terrain in through here. And here we are at waypoint 32 and the turn towards Voronsov's Palace which is at waypoint 33. Construction on the palace was begun in 1830 and was completed in 1848. It was the summer residence of the Governor General of the Novorossiysk Territory, Count Mikhail Semyonovich Vorontsov. It remained in the family for three generations. After the Soviets came to power in the October Revolution, the palace was transformed into a museum. In 1927, a resort was opened in one of the wings and a polyclinic and rest facility opened in another. During the Yalta Conference in 1945, the palace was used as a residence of the British delegation. And here it is, coming up, Vorontsov's Palace, and the roughly 100-acre park surrounding it. The city of Alupka passing beneath us, and coming up next, the aptly named Swallow's Nest Castle. You can see it there, perched on the edge of Aurora Cliff. The first building built on the site was constructed for a Russian general around 1895. It was a wooden cottage named the uh, Love Castle. In 1911, Baron von Steinheil, a Baltic German nobleman who had made a fortune extracting oil in Baku, acquired the timber cottage and within a year had it replaced by the current building. In 1914, it was sold to a gentleman named Shella Putin to be used as a restaurant. Ladies and gentlemen, the Swallow's Nest. Notice the large rock at the bottom of the cliff. An earthquake in 1927 caused a huge crack in the cliff and a portion of it fell into the sea. That's the portion you see there in the sim. Although the earthquake didn't damage the building itself, it was closed to the public for almost 40 years. It reopened in 1975 and today is an Italian restaurant. Okay, we'll head back inland again. Just want to get us back on our course line so that we're on the exact path between waypoints 34 and waypoint 35. This flight path actually takes us back past waypoint 7 in the observatory complex, but we'll skip all that and head on down the road. Once we make the turn at waypoint 35, we'll be heading for waypoint 36 and the Khan's Palace, also uh, known as Hansere. It's located in the town of Bakhchisere, which itself was built as a monument to Sahib I Gide. The Crimean Khan dynasty moved their capital to Bakhchisere from neighboring Salisik in the first half of the 16th century. 
The palace is a walled enclosure and it contains a mosque, a harem, a cemetery, living quarters, and gardens. An inscription on one of the palace walls refers to the palace as a string of sea pearls. This may be more than just a metaphor. In its layout, the palace really does resemble a necklace. Various constructions, courtyards, and gardens are placed around the large palace square like a string of beads. Two gates allow access to the square. The most prominent of these is the northern gate. The smaller southern gate doesn't seem to be modeled in the sim. And here it is, the Khan's Palace in Bakchesere. That's the northern gate prominent on the right, in the sim and in real life. And a few more palace views. The Khans of the Crimean Tartars ruled the region until late in the 18th century, when Russia annexed the Crimea uh, during the reign of Catherine the Great. That happened in 1783. All right, on to Waypoint 37, the return to Simferopol, and the FC Tavria Locomotive Stadium. FC stands for Football Club. That's football. The game the odd nation or two refers to as soccer. And this stadium, Locomotive Stadium, is presently one of about 15 stadiums in the Ukrainian Premier Football League. Built in 1967, the stadium is the home of the Tavria Simferopol, Simferopol's football team. They finished the 06-07 uh, season in 5th place. Right now, they're in 6th. And if you happen to be in town on October 27th, you can watch them play Zorya Lugansk. And here's the stadium coming up on our right. Here it is in the sim, and here it is in real life. And Tavria Simferopol in action. Okay, now we'll head back out of town. We are once again going to recross the Crimean Mountains and return to the Black Sea at Sudok, which is farther up the coast than we've been thus far. This town of about 15,000 inhabitants is situated 57 kilometers to the west of Theodosia and about 104 kilometers to the east of Simferopol. Founded by Greek merchants from Byzantium in the 3rd century AD, has changed ownership several times since then. Around the year 1230 or so, uh, the site was occupied by the Venetians, members of the Polo family and other Venetian merchants, who then ceded it to Genoese control in 1365. Soon afterwards, they built a fort on the high ground to the west of the city. And that fortress is our next stop, Waypoint 39. We'll be seeing it as soon as we cross this next ridgeline. There it is, commanding the high ground above the city of Sudak. We are slipping in here past the cliffs of Novi Svet. And we'll make a slow loop around the fort itself so that you can get a good look at it. That's a pretty impressive detail to include in a military flight sim. Here it is in the sim. And real life and a few additional views. These walls are two meters thick and six meters high. Okay, one last look as we come around. and the town of Sudak itself, passing below us. Okay, next up, Waypoint 40 and the infamous rock with a hole in it. It's just a short hop away from Sudak. And where's the rock? Is asked almost as often as, how do I avoid Amram's? There it is out in the distance at the base of Karadag. We'll approach along the shoreline. The town of Kurortnoye.
and a real-world photograph of the approach. Caught a dog? Not a bad likeness. And there's the rock at the base of the cliffs, although the real-world cliffs are actually steeper than what they are in the sim. Closing in on it. We'll take a look from the outside first. Hey, not bad at all. A couple of more views. Pretty cool rock. Okay, let's swing around and take a closer look at it. Just going to keep it on sight as we swing around. Just about lined up. Here it is coming up. And a close up view. Woohoo! Obviously, this is one of those uh, waypoints that's just plain fun. Just have to pull up in time. Alright, coming over the top. And on to Theodosia. But first, let's take a last look at the mission map. Here we are, leaving the rock. Then we'll fly cross-country to Theodosia. Cross the bay and follow the Pravichno Krimsky Canal for a bit. Then we'll head out to the Sea of Azov and uh, take in some offshore oil rigs, then down to Kersh, and finally our landing at Kersh Bagarova. Okay, back in the cockpit and heading up the coastline toward Theodosia. I had a hard time finding a name for it, but I believe that's Mount Kiek Atlama out there on the headland. This is a very pretty stretch of the uh, Black Sea shoreline. Okay, we've moved farther down the coast, and there's another look back towards the headland. And Theodosia, coming up on our left. This is yet another city founded by Greek colonists, this time back in the 6th century BC. Of course, it had a very different look back then. It has a very rich history, and today it's a popular resort city with a population of about 85,000 people. There are beaches, mineral springs, mud baths, and apart from tourism, its economy rests on agriculture and fisheries. Here's a look at the harbor, and one of the local industries is brewing. So if you're ever in the area, you might want to stop by for a beer. Okay, we'll head out across the bay and fly on over to uh, Waypoint 42, which is where we'll pick up the uh, Pivnichno Krimsky Canal. And yet another lighthouse. If you're a lighthouse aficionado, this whole stretch of the Crimean Peninsula might be the place to come. Okay, I've jumped ahead and we're closing in on Waypoint 42, where we'll pick up the canal. There's a bridge crossing it right there, and that's where we'll pick it up. I'm going to swing out beyond and then circle back. Here's the canal, we're just passing over it now. And I'm circling around to pick it up at the bridge. And here we go. We'll just fly along the stretch of it from waypoint 42 to 43, but this is just a small portion of the canal towards its end. The entire canal is 400 kilometers long. It starts at the uh, Dnieper River in southern Ukraine and carries its water all the way down to its terminus uh, down here at this end of the Crimean Peninsula. The water it carries is used primarily for irrigation, and combined with a second canal system on the Ukrainian mainland, 
The two combined constitute the largest irrigation system in Europe. Now, the tour follows it for quite a way as it flows through uh, an area that's uh, primarily agricultural. And watching it is about as exciting as watching paint dry. So, I'll jump ahead a bit and we'll come up on Waypoint 43 quicker than we would otherwise. Okay, coming up on Waypoint 43 and our turn towards the Sea of Azov. That's Lelino coming up on our left. We are in the eastern Crimea in the southwestern part of the Kersh Peninsula. And now heading north towards the Sea of Azov. Just as a point of information, this town's Crimean Tartar name is Yadikuyu, which means Seven Wells. And that rail station is Semkolodeze, which also means Seven Wells. I imagine, based on the name, that uh, this town's claim to fame was that it had water. Semenovka, off to our left. And this point of land coming up is Kazantip. And there's the Kazantipsky Lighthouse. In real life, you can find ancient ruins of settlements dating back to the 3rd and 2nd centuries BC nearby. Welcome to the Sea of Azov, or in Russian, Azovskoye Mora. This is the northern section of the Black Sea, linked to that larger body through the Strait of Kersh. And it is the shallowest sea in the world, with an average depth of 13 meters and a maximum depth of 15.3 meters. Um, okay, we should be seeing the first of the oil rigs soon. Let me concentrate for a minute. There it is, materializing out of the haze. Okay, now, when we get this closer, I think you'll discover that there is an incredible amount of detail packed into even these offshore oil rigs. I'm going to turn away first and then come in from a slightly different angle. Okay, well there's rig one and rig two off in the distance. Here we go. Turning back in. Completing the turn. And these oil rigs are a great way to have some fun. Let's take a closer look at the underside first. Here we go. Well, that was pretty easy. There's the second rig at waypoint 45. Okay, let's do that again. Lining up. Oh shit, this one's a lot narrower. We're going to have to go through sideways. Kick in left rudder to keep the nose up, and whoa-hoo! I think that deserves a roll. Hey, you still with me back there? You can open up your eyes now. Actually, that one took me by surprise, too. I wasn't expecting it to be that narrow. Okay, those were waypoints points 44 and 45. Now on to 46 and 47. Actually, there are more than just the four offshore oil rigs that are marked by these waypoints. When you go to fly the mission yourself, be sure to check off the western coast of the Crimean. You'll see three more out there. Coming up on platform number three at waypoint 46. There we are. Oh cool, there are two tankers anchored off the platform waiting to take on crude. And there's the fourth platform materializing out of the haze. Okay, that last one was a little hairy and my pulse rate still isn't quite normal, so we're just going to do a close flyby on this one. I gave you a look at the bottom before, and now here, you get a look from the top. Quite a bit of detail. Okay, leaving waypoint 46, heading for 47, and the fourth platform.
And we'll just do a close flyby on this one as well. The damn things are pretty well detailed. I don't know if you noticed, but you even have small boat landing platforms down near the waterline with uh, ladders to climb up to the uh, platform. Okay, now we're making the right hand turn to head back towards waypoint 48, the Crimean Peninsula, and Kersh. There's the peninsula out ahead of us, and oil platforms number three, and number four off our right wing. Ah, that's the Taman Peninsula out there in the Krasnodar region of Russia, immediately across the Kersh Strait. Closing in on the coastline. And there's the town of Osavini in the distance. Okay, we're feet dry, leaving the Sea of Azov behind us. And a fast approaching Kersh. Kersh is one of the most ancient city sites in Ukraine. People were already living here as early as the 17th century BC. Kersh as a city traces its start to the 6th century BC as the Greek colony of Panticipaeum, and that hill in the distance is Mount Mithridates, where the city's temples and civic buildings were placed. The large bay provided an excellent port and still does, and its location on the Kersh Strait makes it a key to the Sea of Azov. Today, Kersh is a city of metallurgists, shipbuilders, and fishermen. The Kersh Metallurgical Works Factory, Kamish Buran Iron Ore Plant, and Zaliv Shipbuilding Factory, producing super tankers and warships, are all located here. Once again, Mount Mithridates. And I want to take a moment or two to point out something that's not listed in the tour, but exists up on that hill. As I mentioned, the Greek city of Panticipaeum, ooh, nice dry dock, uh, had its civic buildings and temples built up on that hill, and there's one of those temples right there. The sim depicts it as a complete building, but what's actually in that location are the ruins. And just one final interesting note about Kersh and the ancient Greek city of Panticipaeum. I'm sure you've all heard of the ancient city of Atlantis, the sacred citadel by the sea. Well, some scholars have noted that this location matches the uh, descriptions laid out in Plato's dialogues exactly. So, wouldn't it be cool? Okay, musings aside, one last look back over our shoulder at the strait. By the way, the word kersh comes from an old East Slavic word meaning throat, and given the narrowness of the strait, that somehow seems appropriate. Okay, last stop on our tour will be the Kersh Bagarovo Aerodrome. That's where I'll be dropping you off, and I believe you have transportation waiting for you there. And there it is, we've got a visual on it now, there's the base out in the distance. It's really a very pretty evening. Sky's clear. I really don't feel like the tedium of coming in on the ILS. Let's see if we can get clearance for a VFR approach. Kersh Tower, this is Enfield 1-1. Good evening, Enfield 1-1. This is Kersh Tower. Kersh Tower, Enfield 1-1. Request permission for direct VFR approach and landing. Enfield 1-1, this is Kersh Tower. You are cleared for a VFR approach on runway 05. Winds are negligible at 3 knots from the northeast. Kersh Tower, Enfield 1 1, thank you. Okay, there's the base off in the distance. Make our turn and set up for final. Zooming in on the runway. Make sure I know where it is. Flaps coming down. Gear coming down. And just about time to turn final, just a little bit more. Here we go. Kersh Tower, Enfield 1 1, turning final. Enfield 1 1, Kersh Tower, you are cleared for our approach. Let's get ourselves lined up.
keep an eye on our speed, descent rate, pull the end of the runway into the HUD and get it centered. Just about there. Now we'll just hold it in the HUD, right about that level. Everything green. Holding the end of the runway right there on the HUD. Keep an eye on the descent rate. Don't descend too fast or we'll pancake right into the runway. Hold it off. Hold it off. Eye on the airspeed. Descent rate. Just about there. Holding it off. Holding it off. Karish Tower, Enfield 1 1, safely down. I can walk away from another one. Enfield 1 1, Kirsch Tower, please follow prescribed radio procedures. Take your first available taxiway and taxi to the south parking. Tower, Enfield 1 1, Roger. All right, let's get you to South Parking, where I can drop off this bird and you can get on with the rest of your life. Hope you've enjoyed the tour. As you can see, there's an incredible amount of detail on the ground if you take the time to find it. You'll find Brit Radar Dude's uh, mission enclosed. Feel free to fire it up and fly it yourself. You'll also find his Word document in the package containing descriptions of the various highlights, as well as pictures of his own. My sincere thanks to both Mark Shepard, Call Sign Shepsky, who created the original tour, and to Steve Tonkinson, Call Sign Brit Radar Dude, for adding to the original tour and republishing it. Ah, looks like your ride is coming now. Hope you've enjoyed the tour yourself, and perhaps gained a greater appreciation of the sim, what it contains, and the part of the world you're flying over every time you fire it up. Hopefully, whether you fly fighters or ground attack, you'll take the time to fly low and just look around. Yep, that's definitely your ride. Okay, let's just get ourselves parked here, and then I'll let you off. If you're interested in uh, knowing what graphics mods I've installed, They'll be listed in the credits, so just hang in for those. I've also included uh, a few photos that I couldn't uh, put into this flight. So if you're at all curious, hang in through the credits. And a special thanks to Brett Radar Dude for lending me his voice. His was the voice of Keresh Begorovo Tower. Okay, let's shut everything down. Powering everything off. Okay, you're free to catch your ride. Thank you. You have control. <laughs>